At Rathcamp Financial, we provide wealth management services that may ease clients' fears of financial loss and help them retire comfortably. Our greatest satisfaction comes from working with clients for many years and helping them realize their dreams. With Michael Boswell, Eastern Conference champions, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. That's got to feel it. pretty good in your first season as a manager. Yeah, it definitely feels good. I, uh, I even said to some of these guys tonight, I was like, I appreciate you guys. You know, you guys are my first full-blown team that I'm kind of the kind of the head of. And I told them, I was like, I appreciate you guys sticking it out and grinding through to where we are today. So it was, it was a good little moment tonight. This was almost a no-doubter, I mean, from the word get-go. Yeah, no, offense definitely came out swinging tonight. And, uh, you know, after that first inning where Will kind of, I don't want to say muddied through, but he definitely got through without giving up a run. and. After he got through that, he was kind of nails for the rest of the night. Congratulations. It's a man right here. There he is right there. <laughs> uh, what has been the secret this year? Most wins in the, the league this season, and now you just need two more. I think the secret has been letting these guys have a little bit of fun, you know, in the, in the school ball. And, like, I, I graduated assistant up at, up at Tiffin University this previous year, and School ball is a little bit different, you know. There's, it seems like there's a lot of pressure on every single swing, every single pitch, and you know, over the summer, and like I played summer ball as a player, so like coming in, it's just kind of like let's let's let these guys have a little bit of fun, relax for the first time probably in four, five, six months, and once they realized that they were kind of around a guy that was like, we can have a little bit of fun and kind of like be ourselves, I think it kind of just let them let them be themselves and and take good swings and, and have good innings and have good practice days and, and take good BP. So it's always been. It's always been kind of happy-go-lucky around here, so that's definitely, I guess, the, the big secret for me. Seems like there's always someone stepping up. Figaro here of late, uh, and Tim Moore, he's been probably one of your most consistent players. Yes, absolutely. I mean, this is my obviously my first year with, with Victor Figaro, and he's been, he's been awesome this year. I mean, he listens, he talks to us about the game, he's seeing things. He's definitely grown up since day one. Uh, but a guy like Tim Moore, I mean, I, I played with him for, for two years. I coached him for a year, and the fact that he's still here is – is awesome and he's always been one that kind of kind of took the leadership role on his shoulders and just kind of it's not a loud leadership role for him but he's always been the guy to kind of like just lead by example and, and expect the most out of guys and that's how I always was as a player and that's why we kind of got along when we were teammates and especially now that, that I'm more of a, of a coaching position obviously but it's been it's been nice having a guy like Tim Moore around. And it's kind of a surprise he's still with the team. Yeah honestly me and Mike uh, my assistant talked about it earlier in the year about who potentially could leave early and, and he was the name that that got brought up but obviously me knowing Tim for a couple years now I kind of figured he would stick it out. Uh, he's never been one to kind of like you know cut it short or anything no matter how his body feels he's been one to just kind of kind of grind through it and, and finish at the finish line like like winners do and that's what he's been for the last three years. A shortened game because of the run rule, 12 yes. nothing victory. Okay. Talk about your starting pitcher because he had a whale tonight. He was awesome tonight. You know, uh, his last two outings in the regular season weren't weren't how he wanted them to go, obviously. But uh, but we talked about things in between. We talked about things after the last outing of his and, and just attacking guys with the fastball and, and stop trying to nibble and be too cute with things. And uh, I think that definitely hit home with him tonight. He, uh, he came out of the first thing I told him was, you're going back to the same old, same old, where you're trying to be too fine with pitches. Was like, I was like, you were a good pitcher. I was like, be that tonight. Tag these guys with the fastball, put, a guy, put guys away with a breaking ball, and that's exactly what he did. And I can't ask any more of the guy to go out and throw, what, six and, six and two-thirds, one hit, and, and just kind of flat out dominate. So that's, I, was, I was really happy to see that for him. He's definitely put the work in the summer to, to, earn, that, to earn that outing. And that's after 20 plus pitches in the first inning. Yeah, it was it was funny. My one of my catchers, Braden White, made a comment to him tonight, kind of kind of busting stones at the end of the game. I, I told Will, I said, "You'd be out there still if you didn't throw 30 pitches in the first inning." And he just shook his head at me. But uh, but that's one thing I've done this summer is kind of kind of bust stones, have fun with these guys, and let them know that I'm not afraid to tell you what's on my mind. But I got told I was a I was a major league baseball player but with, uh, with chirping players. So an MLB prospect of, of chirping his own players. It's like, come on guys, I'm not that bad, but it's just let these guys have fun. I mean, they can do the same thing to me. It's just, you know, I've been around a little bit longer. I'm a little better, than it, better at it than them. So definitely teach them the ways of, of growing into an upperclassman and, and making sure guys are in, in line, I guess you could say. Yeah. So. But we can't speak for Springfield, but you know, they had to make that long trip over oh. here. They had to play and finish a game the day, it was supposed to be a day off. Yeah. Then they come here, and things just fall through for them. Offense has not been a problem for you guys this year. 
when you've needed a win by a run, Third you've found that. Nothing. And now here you are, a 12 nothing win here. But this is pucker time. Yes. <laughs> this is where it runs are going to be hard to come by the next couple of games. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you got a you got a scratching hole in the playoffs, and that's how it is. But luckily, uh, you know, I don't want to say luckily. Uh, it's always it's always tough to see a team have to go through that. You know, especially travel here, get here late last night, wake up, play a game today, and probably travel back tonight. It's always tough to see. But at the end of the day, it's it's how this game goes. I mean, it's it's happened to us. We've been back late at night. We've been back at four o'clock, almost five o'clock in the morning sometimes, and wake up the next day, come here and play. And you know, you just kind of kind of pull your bootstraps up, and, and you kind of get through it. And that's it's kind of the summer ball mo. I mean, everyone everyone goes through it. You know, we're not the only ones that do it. They're not the only ones that do it. So it's just it comes down to the guys that truly truly want it. I'm not saying they didn't want it or anything like that, but it was kind of nice to be able to play at home on Sunday, have a nice day off, and then come here. But We've definitely been in those shoes where you got to pull the bootstraps up and, and play yeah. the next day. So I get it. Now you have a day off. We don't know who you play yet. Uh, Quincy was leading when we last saw. Uh, you've not seen Quincy this year. You did have two with Thrillville. So Thrillville comes back. You're familiar with your opponent. But other than that, Quincy is uh, pretty dominant too. Yeah, kind of the unknown is kind of what you're diving into. I don't know. When we played Thrillville, it was in the first half. I think it was the first two maybe maybe game two or three of our like 13 or 12 game win streak that we had earlier in the year so we definitely played them when we were hot uh you know at this point of the year it's kind of like what you have and i know ralph santana over at thrillbo does a great job he's a great guy uh got a lot of respect for him uh don't know anything about quincy so i mean obviously hats off to them for for making it the way they did and they turned the second half around but uh I guess going into this is kind of the same old same old as you know we're gonna have the sticks ready and, and gonna kind of pitch it the way we do and kind of roll with it we know they're in the prospect league. We know they're from Illinois, and that's about it. <laughs> yeah, it's either six, it's either seven hours or seven and a half hours or six hours. So, so pick your poison at this point. But yeah. we're ready to play. Play whoever it is. Either way, good luck to you. Thank you very much.